If terrorists attack Portland, would emergency workers be prepared? As KPTV's Jim Hyde reports, that's exactly what officials were trying to figure out today. In tents outside the ER here at Emanuel Hospital, the staff have set up a triage section to sort out the seriousness of the injuries caused by terrorists. Terrorists set off an explosion in downtown Portland. But so as not to bring the city center to an actual halt, Portland International Raceway, complete with a mock-up of downtown, stands in during this drill. Impacts of the faux explosion ripple through the metro area, from North Portland to David Douglas High, Beaverton, and Emanuel Hospital. Victims come by bus, car, ambulance to Emanuel. First, they need to be cleansed of the toxins from the fictional dirty bomb. Got a chest injury here. Then the emergency care staff try to learn what's wrong with them, and not only the wounds that are visible. The explosion was horrific. I think they're dead. And I... High school student actors play some of the victim roles. Other volunteers from the community, also sporting garish wounds worthy of the best Halloween makeup artists, stand in too. Hospital staff say they're taking it seriously. It's a little overwhelming, but at the same time, we've been trained. Um, I'm an emergency room social worker, so this is part of part of the job. This is what we do day to day, and then it's just kicked up a notch today. The wounded and burned just keep on coming. At OHSU, Portland's other trauma center, some role players show up with an attitude of wanting to help their neighbors learn to deal with such a mass casualty event. It took a bit of time for the paramedics to come and get to us. I think in that time, if I was capable or able, I think it'd be really good to have the training to, uh, to treat others around me and just try to get them stable until they can be seen by the professionals. The people portraying the injured in the Portland event are working in conjunction with disaster drills in Phoenix, Arizona and in Guam. Homeland Security Department spokeswomen call it the biggest such exercise ever. What counts for the folks volunteering and working here is how well they and their neighbors are dealing with the trauma. I think we did very well. Um, but every exercise is really about assessing how you can do better next time. And I think this has been really invaluable. The exercise and evaluation of the performance will continue into Friday in hope of being better prepared for the real thing. Jim Hyde, the 10 o'clock news. Homeland Security gets put to the test in a big and now deal for today. Strippers. It was a disaster drill here in Portland. Here's a look at how it got started. Yeah, blow some stuff up. And with that explosion, America's largest ever terror drill was underway. Okay, so Emergency how am I coming through? Emergency responders and rescue teams gathered this morning okay, to test their so preparedness. I'm going to go ahead Some and narrate over this. observers noticed a few of the responders I went to this drill had in 2007. failed to wear protective it took breathing place around equipment August. and said victims... And that information, the video that I shot, aired here on Portland Community Media. They were taken for You've never seen it. Uh, you can look online, type in Alex problem. Answering Top Off 4. We had insufficient number of radios. Well, the next yeah. video, and the next video is is footage that I shot in David Douglas High School. And Michael Shertoff came to visit, who at that time was the head of Homeland Security. That guy looks like a gremlin, especially when he's photographed. David Douglas High School. Uh, you had all these different members of the military, uh, military branches, Secret Service. You have the governor there. You had just so many different people were there. Yeah, that's the video. That's it. And just go ahead and like I uh, scroll through the video so we get as many visuals. We want to show like the type of people that are there. And we'll just give people an overview so you, you see what's going on here. What do you see? This is a massive military operation in a Portland, Oregon high school. And what are they doing? And look how concerned they are. I mean, there's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of tension in the air. The parents of David Douglas High School weren't told what was going to be taking place. Allegedly, the kids had to take home uh, uh, slips that their parents had to sign. But were they told what was going to be taking place? Were they told Michael Shertoff, the gremlin, would be there? Were they told that all these other uh, creepos would be there? Were, were they told that in the drill, as, as you might, oh, yeah, get a photo op, lady. Yeah, you're with a real hardcore killer there. Yeah, isn't that sexy? Yeah, but why don't you go put on some uh, 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 zombie stripper makeup? Yeah, you'll do good in the Portland uh, underworld. Oh, oh my God, and just all the outfits, getting the uniforms next to the kids and the kids next to the uniforms. Now, as we'll try to show here and scroll forward, 
You've got kids, there we go, manning the checkpoint. Those are high school students manning a radiation checkpoint. And there's other clips where, they, you know, you go uh, to, uh, what is it, Emmanuel over here, not too far from uh, uh, PCM TV. They had a radiation washdown uh, area where you go in and you strip your clothes off and you get sprayed. Oh, yeah. And here I am talking to the principal of David Douglas High School. And he tells me not a single parent complained. Let's just play a, a minute of audio. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> Did you officially request to be a part of it or was something that uh, they invited uh, to you? We were invited to participate. All this stuff gets me worked up. So your name, sorry? Randy Hutchinson, I'm the principal of David Douglas High School. Okay, and have you, what, what's it been like trying to organize around this? Um, from our perspective, it's been fairly, uh, fairly normal procedures for us. All right. We've had, uh, an opportunity to participate in this. We were asked um, about in March and then confirmed now, in uh, August that we would be coming back. site. And uh, from that Kulingoski, point... Ted Kulingoski, he is the former governor of Oregon. Boy, oh boy, does he look like a shyster. Boy, does he have skeletons in his closet. Didn't he work with uh, Neil Goldschmidt, the pedophile, with a 14-year-old girlfriend? Uh, so Kulingoski speaks, and he speaks of Succession of government. Uh, go ahead and roll that clip. Uh, the, this is and I need audio in a studio. Great education for uh, me. Um, I'm actually going to fall into a trap that some serious is going to happen to me, and I'm going to have to trigger the succession clause of the Constitution, who becomes the governor in a time of emergency. And it's an interesting exercise. After I've been told, the only thing I have to worry about is when they start putting the gloves on and uh, the, those plastic latex things. That they, this sounds like a good time to go back to that, some of that stock footage of the Portland zombie dance. But, uh, you know, uh, play a little electronica music, a little, just have a little, you know, sound effect of Kulingoski saying succession of government. The succession clause of the Constitution, who becomes the governor in a time of emergency, and it's an interesting exercise. Having people twerking and have sounds of helicopters flying over, and maybe people twerking with the helicopter itself. Uh, they're just all different. You can look at Rihanna, uh, the, the Grammy Awards, where she walks up on the stage, like all sexy-like, with like a, an army of stormtroopers behind her. 